Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to look at square roots and cube roots today with equations. That's what we'll be looking at today. Let's get started. First off, a quick review on exponents. This is going to be super fast. Um, this number here is called the base. That number is called the exponent. The biggest mistake people make with um, exponents is that they tend to multiply the numbers together but you are not multiplying 2 times 3, you are multiplying the base number times itself the exponent number of times. So this would be 2 times 2 times 2, which gives you 8. Just a quick recap, if you've never seen that before, you might want to go watch a video on exponents before we proceed, because this is going to get a little more complicated. Square roots are the opposite of squaring a number. Squaring a number is another word for raising it to the power of 2. A square root looks like this. So this would be read as the square root of 81. What it means is what number times itself will give you 81? Well, 9 times itself will give you 81. 9 times 9 is 81, or 9 squared is 81. Um, but we're adding in this whole plus and minus thing, and I want to explain that real quick. Negative 9 times negative 9 gives you positive 81. Positive 9 times positive 9 gives you positive 81. So there's two answers. Both negative 9 and positive 9 are solutions. So when we're asked for the square root of 81, the answer is plus or minus 9. Just a quick explanation on that. The way this would look like with variables is the square root of x squared is what number times itself will give you x squared plus or minus x I know this makes more sense with numbers but let's go through it so x times x is x squared negative x times negative x gives you x squared basically um, square roots and squaring numbers are inverse that's the importance that I'm trying to show you here if you take the square root of a square the square root of x squared you'll get x out. Okay, so I just want to kind of emphasize those two concepts. This is more clear with numbers, I know, but I just wanted to show you with variables because you will see this kind of played out pretty often. Now let's go over this with cubed roots. A cubed root is, looks like this, and it asks what number times itself three times will give you 125? And the answer to a cubed root is this. The cubed root of 125 is 5. Now you might ask yourself, why is it not plus or minus 5? And I'll show you that here. Negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5, three negative numbers, actually give you a negative answer. However, positive times a positive times a positive would give you that positive number. So the cubed root of a positive number gives you one answer. There's only one answer and it's positive 5. By the way, cubed roots work the same way with variables. I'm not going to put this out as an x, x, x times x times x because um, it really does make things a lot more complicated than it needs to be. Let's move on. A process that you should know. I'm going to show you a very simple equation. 2x is equal to 10. I'm going to show you the process by which I solve this. I say, where is the variable? Well, the variable is x. Then I ask, what happened to my variable? Or what is connected to my variable? It's multiplied times 2. To solve the equation, we need to do the inverse operation to both sides. So we're going to divide both sides by 2. It'll look like this. Divide both sides by 2, x is equal to 5. Now the reason I'm showing you this process with this simple equation is because in the next slide I'm going to use the same process to solve square root and cube root equations. So here it is. We have an equation, x squared equals 64. I'm going to go through this process. We find our variable, x. We ask what happened to x. Well, it was squared. It was x squared. So we're going to do the inverse. And as I said earlier, the inverse of squaring a number is taking the square root of a number. So that will look like this. We'll be taking the square root of x squared on the left and the square root of 64 on the right. 
which gives us our answer that x is equal to both plus and minus 8. 8 to the power of 2 is 64. Negative 8 to the power of 2 is also positive 64. So that's the process for solving equations that have x squared in them. They have a variable of 2 or a variable of x with an exponent of 2. Let's look at when we have an exponent of 3. x to the power of 3 is 8. We'll go through the same process. Our variable is x. It is being cubed. We're going to do the inverse to both sides, which is taking the cubed root of both sides of this equation. The cubed root of 8 is 2. 2 times 2 times 2 gives you 8. All right, that is the process. So this process will probably need to be practiced, but it will get really quick, especially if you know certain numbers. Here are some numbers that you should know. You should know that one, the square root of 1 gives you plus or minus 1. The square root of 4, 9, 16. In other words, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. All these numbers raised to the power of 2 are numbers that should be memorized. We should memorize the, no the square numbers 1 through 12 um, should be numbers that we memorize. This will help with working with integers and square roots a lot. You'll be able to immediately pick up on um, the answers to equations if you know these numbers. So I would definitely memorize numbers 1 through 12 at least, um, squaring them and taking the square root. They're the same numbers. A couple more numbers to learn is the cubed root of numbers 1 through 5. So 1 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 3, 3 to the power of 3, 4 to the power of 3, and 5 to the power of 3. These are some good numbers to learn. You'll probably stick to these numbers for most problems that you'll go through as far as finding cubed roots. So it's a good list of numbers to know. It's not a lot of numbers. You can definitely go beyond this, but most questions will involve these five numbers when it comes to cubed roots. Here's your um, Common Core anchor, and as you see there at the bottom with the eligible content, that you are evaluating square roots of perfect squares up to including 12 to the power of 2, and cubed roots up to and including 5 to the power of 3 without a calculator. So again, emphasize that those are the numbers that I showed you earlier that you should probably be familiar with. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.